Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's a beautiful day for a ball game. And this is Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I'm bringing you one. I, as part of a recent purchase from Stratomatic, which I did after the pre-orders, I ordered the 1921 uh, Negro League season for the computer. So... We're going to do a Negro League game today. I've done a couple of these. I think I've done two or three of these uh, in the past on the computer. And this is going to be another one. But this is using the actual Negro Leagues of 1921. I think this was a new issue with this um, uh, with this last offering that Strat put out. And so we are going to uh, play today the... Um, Atlantic City Baccaraz, which will be run by the computer, and we're 87 and 69, against the human-controlled, Sportsman Z-controlled Kansas City Monarchs, who were 92 and 64. So we will see how that works out for me. Um, again, if you know the history of me putting up these uh, computer games, you know that I always lose to the computer. Not always, always, but like nine times out of ten. So we'll see if that happens again this time. Uh, I've got the lineups out here. Um, and we are going to, uh, we'll take a quick look at these. But of course, I don't know many of these players. And I'd be surprised if many of you out there know many of them. That's why I'm going with the computer lineup. But anyway, for the Baccaraz, Busby is pitching. And their lineup will be Jay Barber in center, R. Shively in left, um, Ghost Marcel at third base. I've heard of him, and he's got a card. Uh, I've got uh, on my Negro League um, Stratomatic cards card set that they have. Um, I do have him. Uh, Zach Pettis, Brown in right field, D. Lundy at short. Rojo at catcher, Handy at second, and then Busby, the pitcher, will bat ninth. For me, I've got uh, Bell pitching. I'll have Carr in, center, in right field, uh, Mendez at third, Donaldson at sh in center, McNair in left, Fagan at second base, Moore at shortstop, Foreman at catcher, Blattner at first, and uh, Blattner. Blattner at first, and then Bell will be the pitcher in bat night. So with that, we will get into the game. And of course it shows Yankee Stadium. Um, they don't have the, the views of the ballpark, but it is, I believe, the ballpark statistics. So that's what's gonna be used. Actually, let me put myself up. All right, so you've got Jesse Barber uh, for them batting against Cherry Bell. And I tried to find a picture of Cherry Bell and I could not. And Barber looks like, yeah, he's out. Shively is up. Rabbit Shively is the second batter here in the top of the first for the Baharaz. That's going to be a pop out to Blattner. There's two down quickly, and Ghost Marcel is up against Bell. And looks like he struck. No, he walked. He walked, and then Pettis follows him. One on, two outs. And. Uh, that's going to be possible. No, he's out. So we are at the plate. We allowed no runs to Atlantic City in the first. Love that name, Atlantic City Baccaraz. Car is up. Um, tank Car. He hits a grounder to first base. Pettis will play it, and there's one out. Mendez, Jose Mendez is up. Um, with one down here in the bottom of the first, and he's going to get a base hit to left field. Shively plays it, and Mendez is up at, fir is at first base with John Donaldson 
Obviously, this photo is the wrong John Donaldson, but um, I didn't want to go through the effort of trying to differentiate and find a picture of the actual um, Negro League John Donaldson. And that is a double down the left field line and scores a run. And our Kansas City Monarchs have taken the lead. They were a fine ball club. They won 92 games. And that brings up Hurley McNair. And all of a sudden, Busby is in trouble here in the first inning. And McNair is out. And that brings Bob Fagan to the plate. And he rips a hit. And let's see if that scores a run. It does. And we take a 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the first with two down and Doby Moore up at the plate. And that's going to be another base hit. Busby is getting jacked here. All right, we're going to not send the runner because he's running one to ten. And Sylvester Foreman is up with two on and two down. We've already got two runs in, and that's going to be a pop out. No, 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 that's a double. Dub possible double in the gap. You can't get to it. A another run scores. It's 3-0. Kansas City, and maybe I did definitely pick the right team this time. Frank Blattner is up. Blattner. I, I don't know why I can't say that name. And he, did he get a single? No. So Country Brown will bat against Cherry Bell here in the top of the second with Kansas City up 3 nothing. A great first inning for the Kansas City Monarchs. And uh, he's going to hit a fly out to Carr, it looks like. No, he can't get to it. He dove and he couldn't come up with the ball. And Brown is at first base with Lundy at the plate. No outs yet here in the second inning. And that's going to be a strikeout. And Rojo is up. Brown at first. One down. And he's going to maybe fly out to Carr, but we saw that Carr couldn't get to the other one. But he does have this one. And it's two down with Handy at the plate. And Brown still at first base. And that is going to be a walk. So Bell loses him. And now the pitcher Busby is at the plate. Let's see if they replace Busby to pin, for a pinch hitter. No, they do not do that. And it looks like he might be out. Got him. Yes. So, no runs come across for Atlantic City in the second. We go to the bottom of the second. Busby is still out there pitching, and Cherry Bell, our pitcher, is up. And did, did he get a base hit? Nope. It was a nice snag <coughs> by Lundy at shortstop. And that brings up Tank Carr, who dove for that ball in the first inning but couldn't get to it, but it didn't lead to any Atlantic City runs. And uh, that is going to be an out. And Mendez is up. Jose Mendez with two down here in the bottom of the second. And he hits one uh, not very long. Shively is going to be under that one. And wait, it popped out. He made an error. And Donaldson, who doubled his last time up, comes to the plate with Mendez at second. And he is going to be out. It looks like. And so we, we come away with nothing there, and we go to the top of the third inning. Jesse Barber up against Cherry Bell. Cherry Bell pitching not the greatest so far, but he hasn't allowed any runs. And Barber is out. Shively is up with one down. George Rabbit Shively, and he hits one between first and second and in the right field for a base hit and ghost marcel is up with shively at first base and only one down here in the third inning. that is hit right up the middle and it's for a base hit now they have the uh, baccaras have runners at the corners with pettis up zach pettis at the plate we're going to play the infield back hoping for the double play and instead, we're going to get a double down the right field line, it looks like. And that is exactly what we get. I'm going to try to throw the runner out. I'm going to even try to ball it 
the plate and it does not work. And so now they have a runner at third with one out and it's a three, two game. So they're right on our heels. And let's see if that scores the runner from third. It does. And they tie the game. There's two down though, and Lundy at the plate. So Atlantic City, I was getting a little excited because it looked like maybe we were gonna win in a route, but no, that's not gonna happen. So McNair is up at the plate for us here in the bottom of the third in a 3-3 game between the Atlantic Baccaraz and the Kansas City Monarchs. McNair hits the ball between second or short and third, and he's out. Bob Fagan comes to the plate. He is one for one today with an RBI, and he looks at ball four. Dobie Moore up at the plate. He's also one for one. You remember this was in the first inning when we were, uh, this was like rally row right here. But it looks like he's out, and then we have Foreman at the plate, Sylvester Foreman. And he's going to hit the ball between short and third, and there will be runners at first and second with uh, two down and Blattner up. And Blattner takes the pitch, and he's going to hit it at second base, and they got him. He comes up, brushes himself off, and still has time to get Blattner. So Julio Rojo is up against Cherry Bell, still out there pitching for us here in the top of the fourth, and that's going to be a fly out to Donaldson, it looks like. And it is. He's got it. Handy is up with one down. And he hits the ball between short and third. The pitching in this Negro League didn't look too good, does it? Busby is up. He's going to bunt the run, try to bunt the runner over. Looks like he's still trying to do that. And it's a strikeout. Didn't work. Their bunting strategy backfired on him. And now Barber is up with two down and a man at first base. And he uh, lines it to shortstop, and he does. And so that brings Cherry Bell to the plate. Still, I'm um, obviously he is not pitching that well, but we're going to keep him out there. It's a tie game. And really, I'm not as familiar as some people out there in the community uh, with the Negro Leagues. So I don't know. Um, I know the, I think, I think I saw that the Replay Gamer is really into the Negro Leagues. And also, I think, um, I think Apple Bryan does a lot of uh, Negro League games. So they would probably know the Negro Leagues or be more familiar with the players of the Negro Leagues than I am. Um, but I do like playing the Negro League teams from time to time. They were uh, a part of baseball's rich history. Donaldson is up at the plate with Mendez at first base and two down. And uh, he's one for two with a double on the day. And was that a base hit? No, it was snared by the second baseman hand. So we're going to the top of the fifth inning with Shively up. And he hits a ground ball to Fagan, throws to first. That's an out. Marcel is up. Ghost Marcel. And he looks like he's going to fly out to Donaldson. Let's hope. And he does. And Pettis is up with two down here in the top of the fifth in a tie game between the Atlantic City Baccaraz and the Kansas City Monarchs. And it looks like Pettis struck out. And so we're back up. Kansas City is at the plate as the Baccaras take the field. Um, Hurley McNair staring down Busby, and he hits the ball between sh uh, short and third, but he's out. Bob Fagan, who is one for one on the day. And he's going to hit the ball down the line and maybe out of the park. Let's see if that's out of here. Yes, it is. And so we take the lead, four to three. And um, Dobie Moore is up after the Bob Fagan home run. 
And Dobie Moore hits one. No, it's going to be a fly out to Shiblett. So it's kind of like me at the ballparks in real life. I, if somebody hits the ball to the outfield, I'm like, gone, gone. And then, like, it's just a shallow fly. So that's going to be a ground out, and we're out of the inning. But we did take the lead. We go to the top of the sixth with Bell pitching to Country Brown. Country Brown hits a slow roller between first and second. And it's a wild throw that allows him to go to second. So Lundy is up with Brown at second base. And what happened there? Yeah, he's out. So Rojo is up. They've got a man at second, one out. They don't want to strand that guy at second base. And that's going to be... No, it was... Oh, my God. That was headed right for the outfield, but Moore snagged it. He went up the ladder and got it, and that brings up Handy, who had two down and a man at second base, and he is going to be walked. He's walked, and Busby, their pitcher, is up. Let's see if they pinch hit for him. No. They keep him out there, and it looks like he is going to pop out to Fagan. So uh, that's going to be it, and we go to the bottom of the sixth. That's it for the sixth. That's not it. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. But anyway, um, Frank Blattner is up. I mean, we're only ahead 4-3, so you don't want to leave the game now. Blattner looks like he's going to fly out to Shibley for the first out. No, no. What happened there? He caught it on the hop. He couldn't get to it. So you got Bell up at the plate with Blattner at first. And that's going to be a walk. They they couldn't get it. They didn't get the call. So Tank Carr is up no outs. And we've got runners at first and second. And that is going to be a fly ball to Shibley, it looks like. And that is exactly what it is. He's out. Mendez, he comes up to the plate three for three right now with a double. We could use another double right here or a base hit. Or just anything he's got. But that's hit to the second baseman. And it looked like they tried to turn a double play and couldn't get the back end of the double play. So it is a fielder's choice. There's two down with runners at the corners and Donaldson at the plate. And he strikes out. So we go to the top of the seventh inning. Jesse Barber up against Cherry Bell. Cherry Bell's still out there. He's still chucking it. He's given up three runs on six hits, but his team has gotten him four runs. And Bob Fagan makes the play, and Shively is up with one down. Shively up for Atlantic City. That is a ground ball to Moore, and Moore makes the play. And you notice the errors. You've got some high errors here on the infield. Uh, Blattner with 30. He's an E30. Fagan's an E32. Moore's an E48. And Mendez is not too bad at third base. He's a third <coughs> third base two E20. <coughs> so, Ghost Marcel is up. And he lines the ball, but he is going to be out. And so we are up in the bottom of the seventh. So Hurley McNair is at the plate facing Maurice Busby, who's still out there for Atlantic City. Was that a base hit? No. No. And here's Bob Fagan, two for two on the day with a home run. He's the guy that put us ahead when we were in a 3-3 tie. Did he walk? Yes, he did. And Dobie Moore is up with Fagan at first. One down here in the seventh. It's getting late. Getting late for Atlantic City. Two down, and Sylvester Foreman is up. And he hits the ball to second, and they do get him uh, uh, on and a throw to first base. And so we're going to the top of the eighth in a 4-3 game. Kansas City just barely ahead of the Atlantic City Baccaraz, and there's going to be a base hit between short and third for Pettis. Um, Brown is up. He's two for three.
and let's see what they can do. That is a fly, no, pop out, pop out to Fagan, it looks like. And that is going to be one down with Lundy at the plate and Pettis at first. And he strikes out. And Rojo is at the plate. Bell deals, and it's hit right up the middle for a base hit. But runners do not the runner does not advance an extra base, so it's first and second with two down, and Handy up. And Handy's going to hit the ball between first and uh, second. I'm going to throw for the lead runner and try to get the uh, lead runner, and I did not. So. And I've got a tired bell out there, but I'm going to try to get him through this inning at least. And they are going to pinch hit for the pitcher here with Dennis Graham. And that will be a fly ball to Donaldson, it looks like. But we're in a tie game. We're back in a tie game. It's 4-4 going to the, the uh, bottom of the eight. We have Frank Blattner up. Their new pitcher is going to be Pigeon Toe Mitchell. Pigeon Toe Mitchell out there to pitch to Frank Blattner. Blattner hits it between first and second. Is it going to be a hit? No. Now, with Cherry Bell up, we are going to pinch hit. Um, and I will try to find somebody that would be a good uh, let's see. Mitchell is a lefty who's a 4L, and I luckily I have all righties on, on the uh, bench. Let's see, who are we going to pick? Well, I don't need to see the card, but. Um, hmm. I don't know. Let's see, 254, there's a 254 hitter. 272 hitter. Let's go with that. Portando is going to pinch hit for Bell. One down here in the eighth inning. And it looks like he struck out. Struck out. And Tank Carr is at the plate facing Mitchell. And he puts the ball in play to the shortstop position, but that's going to be an out. And now I do need to um, get a replacement pitcher. Let's see. Yeah, let's go with, well, wait a minute. Jose Mendez, is he already in the game? McNair's already in the game. Leitner. Leitner was not very good, though. But everybody else pretty much has been in the game. He's a starter. Smith was not very good. Crawford. Eh. I'm going to go with Leitner. You got Charlie Leitner out there pitching to Jesse Barber. That is one downside to playing old-time teams. Not just the Negro Leagues, but a lot of old-time teams is you're going to have guys that pitched and played the field, and you're not going to have a, a large selection of available players. Barber is aboard. Shively hits the ball to Carr, who should make the play. And there is one down with Barber at first and Marcel, Ghost Marcel, up at the plate. This is the top of the ninth. That's a ground ball to Moore. And it looks like they turned the double. We turned the double play, and we're out of the inning, and we are. And Jose Mendez is up at the plate, batting against Mitchell. He's three for four on the day, so maybe he can get us out of started out of the gates pretty well here and he does he walks Donaldson's up he's one for four with a double today 
the double was down the right field line. But this time it looks like he's going to pop out to Pettis. One down. Hurley McNair is up. 0 for 4 today. This would be a good opportunity for him to get his first hit of the day. And he doesn't do it. Looks like he's going to pop out to Handy. And there is two down with Bob Fagan up. Two for two with a home run on the day. And he hits it between first and second for a base hit. I am, ah, I'm going to hold the runners. I mean, I, I really didn't like to do that, but 13 is like right on the cusp of what I would consider not going for that extra base. But that's going to be an out. They snagged it. So we're going to the top of the 10th with Pettis up. He's two for four on the day. Leitner got through that first inning that he pitched, but now he allows what looks like a double down the line, down the left field line. And it's a triple. So now I got to bring the infield in. You know me, I hate to bring the infield in, but um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Oh, wait. No. Let's see. Game, uh, position, defense, infield in. And we will swing away with Brown. Brown at the plate. And that stopped the run from scoring. There's one down, though, so I'm going to keep the infield in with Lundy up. And that one gets through. It's a base hit. And they, they took the lead, and we will, well, they, they automatically put the infield back for me. Thank you, guys. Rojo is up, and he's out. And that brings up Handy, who's two for two on the day with Lundy at first base. And two down, and he strikes out. So we're going to the bottom of the 10th. we got to get a run to tie, two to win this game. Foreman is up. He's two for four. But Pigeon Toe Mitchell has been on top of his game since coming into the game. That might be a base hit. No, it isn't. It was snagged by Pettis, so Blattner is up. And Blattner is going to be out. And now we're down to just Leitner. Let me see if I've got a pinch hitter that can uh, be available to hit. That hasn't been used. Smith hit 222. Rogan hit uh, 307. Yeah, let's let's pinch hit with Rogan. So Rogan pinch hitting with two down here. Has to try to keep us alive, does he? No. And we lose the game by the score of 5-4. We'll get the box score for you here. Pretty much what you're looking at. There's the lineups with the um, with how they did uh, for the Baccaraz. Busby pitched seven. He allowed ten hits and four runs. But Mitchell came on and he was golden since he came on. He pitched three, allowed only one hit and no earned runs, walking one. Bell went eight. He allowed nine hits and four earned runs. And Leitner took the loss, went two innings, allowed two hits and one earned run. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, game between two Negro League teams of 1921. But that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.